So indoor mapping is going to be really big someday. We all know that. We just interviewed the head of uh, Broadcom and we're talking about Bluetooth and all sorts of contextual systems. But this little Y Combinator company that just came out last week is going to turn it all on for us. And it's called Estimotes. And we're going to find out what they're doing with contextual little radios. A <laughs> lot of fun stuff right now. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Jacob, and I'm the co-founder of a company called Estimode. So we are trying to build a contextual platform, context delivery platform for the physical world. Yeah, and then tell me a little bit about where you came from and what you're Yeah, so uh, we originally came from Poland, from Krakow. Um, uh, in Poland, before Estimode, I was the co-founder of a company called Etteli, which was the largest self-service advertising network I sold to the largest media group in Poland. And uh, I stepped down last year and I reconnected with uh, Lucas, my co-founder, and we decided to start building something for the real world, something we can touch, we can play with, and this is how Estimote was created. So uh, we should just do a demo because uh, we can talk about what's in these later uh, and what the use cases is. Um, I, certainly with Google Glass, I want to walk down an aisle at a store and I want things to happen. Right. Exactly. So we don't think that the image processing uh, in Google Glass and other devices is something that will be on the market within the next couple of years. We think it will take some time. So we think there is a much better approach to stick tiny, cheap beacons uh, that broadcast some information uh, using Bluetooth low energy yeah. so that phones glasses and other smart devices, they can pick up the signal and they can provide you with the context. They can provide you with location, micro location down to the inches. So we, we believe that the future is exciting about kind of contextual computing and it's not the far away future. It will happen this September and this October because major phone companies just announced full native support for Bluetooth low energy beacons and devices. So let's put a few of them on the table and let's talk about, you know, maybe walking through a grocery store with our new iPhone uh, this fall or iOS 7 uh, based iPhone. And yeah. So, talk so about what, what kinds of things we could do with these. Yeah. So, so basically, you know, technically speaking, each such a beacon, is a, it has an adhesive material. So you can stick it. I don't know if you can do it here. You can yeah. just place it here and it starts broadcasting the data. So whenever you are in the range and it could be two inches, or it could be 70 meters, 200 feet, uh, you will see different contextual messages when you approach. So no QR code scanning, no NFC. You just walk in, let's say to Ikea. You approach a sofa you like the most. You like, you like it, so you take a phone, unlock the screen, and then you see the picture of the sofa. So let me, sh let me show you some, let me show you some, some example. Yeah. So I have the beacons here. Um, so you can see if I approach the beacon, the black dot represents myself and my phone. So if I, if I move away the phone, it's, it's coming back. And if I approach it again, it's approaching the, the phone. So you can very precisely download location, the mm, estimate location, and you can see that there are different ranges. So depending yep. on the range, you can trigger different actions. So let me give you an example. You just approach a shoes, so you can see shoes. But if you, uh, w if you, if you walk away, let's say a few, a few meters away, it will change to something else, like a collection of shoes or a discount. Um, so this is basically without QR codes, without scanning, it just happens on your screen whenever you walk in and take out a phone out of your pocket. Yeah. Um, so let me show you how precise is that and how responsive. So we have three beacons here. So I have a small demo app um, that is uh, able to show you the, the range. So if I approach the blue beacon, it change color to the blue. And if I approach the pink beacon, it change color to pink. And if I approach the green one, it change the color to green. So if I place the blue and pink and take away a green, it will mix color to the violet. So yeah. you can see it's very precise and it's very, very responsive. Fast. It's very responsive. So it's far, it's, it's more it's responsive than the NFC. Yeah. So, it, so it seems that all major phone companies supporting Bluetooth low energy, they just killed NFC. They just killed QR codes. Wow. 
Okay, I get this. And I, by the way, I have one on my uh, key ring because um, yeah. I have a Bluetooth uh, yeah. emitter that another startup got me and it's spraying my identifier into the air. But this is cool. This the packaging is cool. And let's talk about first of all, how much does this cost? So we are now pre-selling the dev kits. So you can buy three of these for ninety-nine dollars, okay. and we provide you not only with the hardware, but we provide you with an SDK. So you will have the demo application, uh, like the distance, the notifications, the proximity, and also something interesting. You could turn your device into a beacon. So. You could have a physical beacon, but you could have an iPad, iPod, iPhone, a beacon as well. So you don't need hardware to start playing with the app. It's already in the App Store. You just download it, turn one device into a beacon, and start hacking with the another device. So um, if I want at a grocery store, because I, you know we, we don't yeah. expect people will stick iPhones to walls. No, no, no. So so that's why. But at a grocery store, or a ski resort, or a Ritz, right? You're going to see lots of use cases for this kind of stuff. Um, how many different beacons can I have? Like, let's say I'm going to do it, build a prototype for the Ritz. How many different beacons? So it's very much depending on the interaction. So if you would like to welcome users, just walk in. Just one in the entrance will be fine. Yeah. If you would like to locate them, three is perfect. If you would like to be down to precise down to the product level, you probably need more. So this is the uh, this is these are the beacons we are now pre-selling and they are available. We are shipping. Actually, we are the only company who's. Can I get a kit of a hundred? Yeah, you can as many as you need. A thousand, a hundred. Is so, there a, a volume discount? Is where I'm going. <laughs> there will be definitely. So so we are yeah. also working on a new version. Will be later this year, which will be much smaller, which be just a sticker. You stick something to a product. Uh, or, a, or a front door. So now at the Ritz, if I want to put you know one every few places, and I want to have a hundred in the Ritz, um, how many different beacons can I have? And it, right now you have five colors here, right? No. Is that what you're limited to? So, or, or no. So so okay. you know form factor is something we are still working on. These yeah. are the early stage prototypes, and and so this is the dev kit. So we want to inspire people to do the internal sale to show them what they can do. We already have been approached by you know, hospitals who would like to track doctors, yep. museums who would like to extend the you know, information behind the sculpture or painting, and retailers who finally would like to embrace the showrooming so people are playing with the staff, but they actually leave store and walk out without buying. So now with this technology, you could identify people who engage with the product, and you could come back to them later on when they decide to buy. This is crazy. Um, uh, what's required on the phone? Does it work so with Android and iPhone? Yeah, or? so in order to make it work, you just need Bluetooth low energy. So yeah. it's also ca called Bluetooth 4.0. It's a completely new redesigned protocol. So it has nothing to do with the Bluetooth you know, our mothers use. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's really low energy. So on a single coin battery, it can run like two years. So you just stick it and forget about so it. So one of these can stick up on the wall for two years and, yeah. and you don't you, We will probably that. ship you the new version before it, it will end up. So Okay. Uh, so uh, does it need iOS 7 to work? So it doesn't. So it, it works with iOS 6. It works with Android devices who sup which support the Bluetooth Low Energy. Right. But with iOS 7, it will be much easier uh, to work with. Because there is this new feature that, is, that has been announced in June uh, by Apple. It's called iBeacon. It's a kind of protocol that will enable the devices like this to trigger some action. So it's still under the NDA. We can't reveal the details. We have to wait till September. Uh, but thanks to the iOS, it will be even s much, much simpler to you know, interact. Uh. And let's say I have a, a Ritz-Carlton app and I want to build this into the Ritz. Do I, what do I need to do? You just need to place our snippet. So it's, a, it's a, like an like a advertising network snippet. So you just place it to your app and your app will be aware of the context and location. So, so in my Objective-C code, I put a little snippet, snippet of code. Yeah. And then you go to our kind, w something we call context management system. Okay. So it's a web-based or mobile-based system where you define what kind of messages should appear 
on your phone so you can edit the label you can change yeah. the image so even kind of store manager or marketing people they can manage the context so the app and the use case you showed me it works when I get close to one of these beacons and yeah. it fires events as I get closer to like this one is there a way to do indoor positioning so that I know you're sitting at that chair because I put three of them around and I know you could do that so there is lots of companies trying to solve the indoor navigation and indoor yeah. positioning problems and we think it's a completely wrong approach because there's no reason to identify the coordinates and the position of people let's say in that corner there's yeah. nothing interesting there so we believe more into the context so whatever has context so this so, so, put one so this table yeah this table could have a context a church have a context a you know an entrance have a context a checkout area have a context so yeah. it's much better to stick it to different objects that will broadcast so you know if you think about it it's a completely damp phone it can connect to the server other part of the world but it has no idea you're in the kitchen or you're yeah. next to this table yeah. so we have to change it so well, I, I can see use case where I'm gonna have one of these and I want to say to my glass okay glass bring a beer here <laughs> and J, JJ who's standing over there is gonna bring a beer here because his his glass says hey yeah. he needs a beer so we have a very strong vision how the future computing will look like so there is no reason you know to have icons on the screen so there's yeah. no reason to find an icon and app and download it it should just you know do automatically so you walk into IKEA you approach a sofa it's there you walk into the restaurant you take a phone and there is a context of the menu you just finish the meal there's a context of paying for it and you walk out there is a context of doing review like uber uh, style yeah. so is there a problem with uh, too many of these in a too small place? No. So each of the beacon they have uh, unique IDs. Yeah. So, so it's basically spraying a number into the air. Yes. Yeah, so the phone or the glass or the kind of other smart device, it knows what is. It. So think about it as a very small lighthouse that is broadcasting some information. So the device is able to locate itself because it knows what kind of lighthouse it is, what is the ID, and what is the distance. So then you could just trigger an action depending on the distance and depending on the ID. Yeah. Is there a way for me to write in my app that uh, when it gets close to this specific yeah. one? So you know the ID, is there a number on yeah, it? Yeah, so, that, so that's so, so that's actually what we try to achieve. You made colors, which is very useful, but I, I can see a use case in a hospital yeah. where there's gonna be thousands of these yeah. and you walk through a field of these, right? And yeah, each, so, each so, so let's imagine you place it in, in your kitchen next to the refrigerator. So if you approach your refrigerator and you just discover there's no milk, so you want to remind yourself about buying more, you just take a phone and then it's already the milk reminder set up already. So you don't have to fire the reminder and set up. It's already there because it detected your presence next to the refrigerator. So you could stick it anywhere and you could stick it to moving objects like you know, in public transportation. Um, but we believe that first step is to build a wireless network sensors of fixed locations so yeah. you know exactly where you are and then you could do like a tile approach where you stick it to kid or stick it to dog and so they can locate themselves so as I told you I mean, two years battery and broadcasting like URL ID take the rest from the cloud it's much better approach than the image recognition and other technologies people have been trying uh, to I solve. get it. I, I'm sold. I, I, I'm a big <laughs> believer in this Bluetooth technology. You, once you see it, it's really magical. You can sense you're uh, 200 yards away from the. Yeah, 300 feet. Yeah, well, yeah. 300 feet? Yeah. So 100 yards, something yeah. like that. Wow. Yeah. Very so, cool. How are you guys? Uh, how are you guys funded? You just uh, uh, graduated out of uh, Y Combinator. Yeah, right? so we have graduated Y Combinator. We are now um, in the process of in talking to investors. And before YC, we have raised uh, seed money, angel money from Europe, European angels. Um, and we also have customers. We already have customers. They are running pilots. They're experimenting. We sold almost like a thousand units already. Even we launched four weeks ago. So I think you're going to sell a lot more than a thousand because one hospital is going to need a, a few hundred. <laughs> yeah, <hope> you know, so. <laughs> you know they, so there are other companies into the market. They are trying to do the Wi-Fi scanning, the ultrasounds. We, we think that this technology has been selected by major phone companies. And also, you know, we came from Europe, and we are, you know, more conservative about privacy. So we think that 
users, you have to bring a value to consumers. So if a consumer can, can you know, shop faster in IKEA, or if he can find a product in Walmart, this is a value, and they will download the apps and they will share some data eventually. So we, we, we are not fans of you know, tracking and spying people without their permission. So it's, it's opt-in only. So yeah. we, we don't allow to use this technology for spamming uh, or annoying people or for bringing non-contextual messages. So we will just turn on the devices if we discover someone is trying to do that because we are able to manage the fleet of the beacons over the air. Ooh. So uh, my phone can talk to this yeah. device back, and so it's a two-way yeah. radio, it's it not is, just a it emitter. Is. There's, oh. So if you think about it, there is a powerful ARM processor, flash memory, Bluetooth connectivity, and accelerometer and temperature sensor. Think about it as a very small smartphone, but for venues, not for a phone. Not for so people. there's more sensors in here than just the yeah. radio? Yeah. Oh, we haven't even talked about that. Uh, yeah, maybe we, we have something to reveal later later this year. So Well, you could think about putting these outside at the Ritz, and it would have a temperature sensor. It could do all sorts of things, so like tell, it's tell the bar, hey, you're going to sell a lot of hot chocolate tonight because it's cold outside. It's all about bringing context. So whatever sensors we could place in that will help us to bring you a better context, the better. Yeah. So it's all about you know bringing a context to your phones, to your glass, to your watch, you name it. Well, thank you so much. I'm writing a book on context, <laughs> and this is, uh, we, we covered a lot of this. We just didn't know what the company was going to look like, and now we do. So thank you very much. Thank you so much.